Hey guys, so uh, I will continue from here to go to Max. A uh, huge thanks to Max for carrying out this effort. And uh, let me just jump and find the question. Yeah, so maybe I should go through uh, some of them. Okay. Yeah, so let me go over the first one, first unanswered one of the list, which is more of a statement rather than a question. It is an example for mining setup rig. It's necessary to be transparent with the ideal rig setup approved by the KT. This enables transparent nature as many configurations are available. I guess you can tie up with, say, one GPU and chip maker. Please do let us know. User. So it's more of a statement. Yeah, we give guidelines for the rigs that we would like to see initially enabled on the platform. So I think Dennis responds in the email uh, to the rig requirements, and we're pretty transparent about it. I, I don't think we are we are hiding anything there. Uh, okay, uh, master nodes and their purpose in the network. We have not designed our system so far with an idea of a master node. The only thing that can qualify as a master node, and then again, it depends on the context of the master node, is uh, our marketplace entry and uh, entry into the, into the centralized platform for now in the alpha version and really beta version. But later, there aren't going to be any master nodes. Basically, any node would be able to come in and uh, uh, use our uh, blockchain protocol and offer and uh, request services uh, from another node and pay any GTs. OK, I see that number 10 is. Does the company apply for position exchange or does community has to do it, for example, via votings? Uh, it, it's, a, it's a mixed thing. We don't explicitly apply for exchanges, but we have very strong investors and community who are actually doing that work for us. What makes the Romation platform unique? Would it be easy for another project to copy it? Well, it's it's a difficult question, right? Um, in order for another project to copy us, they would need address to address all the three unique elements that we have, and this is synthetic data, computing capacity, and then the market play place and services aspect uh, of that AI triad. triad that we provide. And uh, if you start looking, uh, you might say, well, uh, for example, the clouds are uh, providing uh, better, better, um, uh, a better and better capacity. And they're going to get in cheaper and cheaper. So why people should go to neuromation, to the mining resources, right? And uh, not use the cloud. So this is, let's say, uh, a competitor from uh, the computing power end of the spectrum. And the answer is fairly easy. So uh, no matter how efficient the behavior of the cloud would be, uh, we think that the miners are going to be more efficient yet because they are really pushing the computing envelope of the crypto. So they have to get the best hardware. They have to have an edge or just uh, run of the middle legacy hardware that is usually put on the cloud. And then another consideration is that Neuromation can use the cloud if necessary as one of the containers. So there's no reason our Dockers cannot run on uh, uh, Amazon, Google, or a bunch of other uh, contexts, or even on uh, other services such as Google and Gridcoin and whatnot. I mean, in fact, plan to make these, these bridges and run our containers there. It's just economically the uh, the miners should always be on the forefront because they have incentive to do it. So that's one element, right? But at the same time, I'm, I see, uh, uh, I'm, you know, uh, uh, with difficulty how Amazon would, would go and start developing synthetic data angle and really, you know, pushing hard into data and data marketplaces because that's not their core business. They they might develop a piece of it, a patch of it, right? But they're not going to specialize. On a second, uh, on a second uh, part of the triad, and I'm for sure uh, 
not aware of any elements within Amazon where they're going to give services, for instance, and this is third part of the triad. So uh, in order to efficiently run our platform, all of these three elements need to be strongly developed. And similarly goes for any cloud that provides computing element, right? So let's look uh, from the angle of data marketplaces, right? There are uh, data providers out there and people who do synthetic data, there are a bunch of shops. But the thing is, uh, they, because, you know, it, uh, they, they have specific expertise, for example, they have synthetic data for crowd driving or for agriculture and whatnot, and there's more patches of that expertise. They're not going to have enough of the broad experience to truly, to truly connect all the dots and uh, have the scope to truly address the efficiency of synthetic data. And we will just because of sheer, uh, sheer volume of examples. And similarly for services and marketplace, right? There is just one vendor and we plan to have multiplicity, you know, thousands or hundreds of thousands of vendors. And finally, um, places like Upwork, right, where you can order, let's say, blockchain development, AI development, whatnot, or some of the other platforms, for example, Kaggle, where you can deliver, uh, you can you can ask for specific AI tasks uh, to be done for you. They're fine, but then, again, the issue is you would have to go and connect other two dots somewhere else, that is data and, uh, and computing capacity. So it's, um, it's not that somebody can't replicate what we have and even do it better than uh, uh, what we potentially can do. But uh, given that we are the first entity that effectively is thinking about combining all of these three, uh, three elements together to democratize the AI, I think we have an edge, just an ideation. And everybody else is, you know, uh, a little bit behind and a little bit in this, in this fast moving marketplace is actually a lot. So we would be first to market. We have enough funds to develop uh, the platform and uh, the token economy to support the flow. So I think I think it's going to do really really well versus competition. Um, what are what is the difference between versions of alpha, beta, and production on the platform? So a uh, very good question. And uh, let me go in stages. So. What you're going to be releasing today is something between uh, alpha and beta. It's a very, very early version of beta, which has most of the business processes set up. And uh, it makes uh, uh, neuro tokens transactable. So you'd be able to go and order services on the platform for neuro tokens. You'd be able to accept neuro tokens. Uh, it's a centralized system because this is just uh, a taste of things to come. And the idea there is uh, to test uh, a neuro token acceptance, test some of our workflows, and load some of our minor capacity. So we are working with uh, friendly minor pools uh, to begin with, and we need to just kind of close the loop on all, on all the workflows, make sure that they're done right. And then uh, in the middle of the summer, we'll have another release, which is going to be intermediary beta. That's going to be full, uh, full blown beta. And that beta will actually look very similar to uh, the release that we're doing now in terms of business processes, but it's going to be automated, right? So all of those Docker containers are going to be auto-orchestrated on uh, the partner clouds that we have on our uh, minor resources. And uh, uh, specifically, the training algorithms are going to be done automatically, right? So expect beta to still be centralized, but uh, uh, be completely, uh, completely automated. And then by the end of the year, we're supposed to release a production version of our platform, and the production version is going to be fully blockchain chain enabled, whereby uh, you would be able to grab uh, our node, install it on your um, uh, install it on your computer, and then that node would be either able to perform services or order services in a fully distributed auction from any other node in the system. So in that case, you don't even need to go to Neuromation, uh, .io to, uh, let's say, uh, run a synthetic data job. You can just order it from your node and it's going to be written our own blockchain as an auction request. And similarly, then uh, various other nodes will pick it up for uh, neuro tokens that you assign to that task. And uh, quickly, uh, I'm going to address the marketplace aspect. So through uh, alpha, beta, and the production, we're going to have marketplace of services, models, and data transactable for NTK enabled uh, on the system. And this is also going to evolve. So this is going to be an, an incredibly important uh, part of uh, what we do. Okay. 
Uh, let me see. I'm just going to move on. Moving on to the next question. I have a question on pricing on the platform. How that will work if the price of NTK rises? Will that make using the platform more expensive or will it be in fiat? No, basically the prices will adjust. So all the vendors establish their prices themselves, right? And if NTK price rise, uh, prices rise, then you would expect the prices of the job to lower, to have, to, to, to have deflationary pressure. Right, so if uh, let's say I want to sell my data set for 10 NTK, and uh, 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 all of a sudden, you know, the the uh, NTK starts mooning and it grows 10x, right? I'm supposed to then, as a vendor, to decrease my price because I'll have no takers, right? You know, I'll decrease my price by you know the same factor as NTK rises. Um, okay. Uh, Going to the next question. Next question. Since this is a very specific product, how do you pretend to get partners and new clients at the beginning? I mean, is there any kind of incentive for the clients to use the platform that the project fits in a category of as a service? As a service? Uh, it kind of does, and it kind of doesn't fit in, into that category. So um, we are actually uh, going to be doing quite a bit of platform dev. And uh, we already actually have vendors who are willing to go and start selling the services through our platform, uh, be it the data sets, capacity, or even uh, network development and uh, uh, neural network development. And this is the, the implication of this is very simple for, 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 for a partner, right? We are going to spend millions of dollars on marketing the platform. And a lot of these little shops who are doing these services by themselves right now just do not have capacity to do it, even though they might have very good solutions. We are talking to people who have extremely sophisticated data sets, let's say, of hand models, extremely sophisticated data sets of uh, retail environments, of street environments for uh, 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 automated car driving. But these are these are small companies, and these small companies just cannot put put proper proper effort into marketing their service. So it makes imminent sense for them to list their services on our platform. And then uh, have us market for them, and we are basically taking a small margin on top of that. But uh, um, if I were a small business developing, let's say, data sets or neural network models, I would go there in Jiffy. Um, so um, is that the incentive, and do we fit artificial intelligence as a service? Well, we do in some respects because uh, the models that you're going to be seeing in the marketplace that you can buy, if the model is trained, you can just click a button and deploy it uh, for a specific per minute fee in NTK on uh, uh, our minor capacity. So in that in that sense, it can qualify as a service, right? You select the capability, you push a button, and the model is deployed. You get the API entry, and then you can just you know hit the model with data and uh, get get the response. Uh, uh, in that sense, it does. As far as uh, putting a label to us, I would say that we would be like Alibaba for uh, for AI, for both services and actually AI goods. And you can broadly classify AI goods as uh, models, data, and server capacity. And then the services would be model creation, data labeling, data creation, and general consulting. And uh, neuromation is going to be a place where you can go and get all of that and transact in a DK for that. Okay. So, is there an update to your scaling plans developing blockchain for NTK? No hash graph. It's been considered new recent thoughts. So, we are still picking a platform for our uh, proper blockchain and blockchain auction. Uh, for the services, uh, we are very busy with pushing out the. Uh, I'll call it alpha beta release right now, and we will probably nail the, the exact specs uh, um, around mid-April to really start pushing uh, the, 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 the full production version to deploy by the end of the year. So as you know, we only finished our token sale. Uh, and technically, we're still supposed to be in the process of token sale, but finished it 
a little bit more than a month ago and already have uh, uh, the released platform. So we are also scaling pretty fast in terms of our headcount. I believe we're uh, up to 50 people uh, now and about 40 of them are developers. So we are really, you know, uh, putting pedal to the metal in our development. I guess I'm drifting into, into, into something else. Okay, uh, which industry vertical are we most excited about or things the most potential? Can you talk about how fast data set demand is growing? Thanks for taking my question. Uh, okay, we need to restart the stream. Let me just hang there while the stream is restarted. Okay, let's start again. Um, so next question, high consumption is vertical. Are you most excited about or think is most potential? Can you talk about how fast data set demand is growing? Thanks for taking my question. So I'm actually excited most for industrial automation. And this is mostly due to my personal preferences, but uh, anywhere AI is needed, we can help in a major way. And to give you an example, in uh, industrial automation, all the robots that are using computer vision that are doing intelligent tasks would uh, uh, do superbly well in synthetic data uh, space, and that uh, would benefit greatly from AI. And this is, you know, basically pairing up any robot arm with a camera, and uh, if you give it uh, some scenarios in the virtual world and simulate the controls, suddenly it can do really well you know, from uh, a most mundane to most sophisticated tasks. Uh, another very interesting example is uh, in uh, 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 self-driving cars, for instance, you can actually teach the algorithm into human intentionality, right? And so let's say you have a car, Tesla driving uh, in the residential, residential neighborhood, and there is a child with a ball running around, right? So there is, you know, just, uh, some child's toys by the side of the road and a ball, or a ball is rolling toward the road and there are children, right? Uh, if your car has just driven around and never hit, you know, as, as bad as it is children who are running after the balls, it's not going to have enough examples of knowing what to do and that children generally like to kick balls and there's some probability that the ball is going to go on the road and all kinds of bad things will start. So we can simulate these god awful scenarios uh, in a virtual environment and produce millions of very sophisticated simulations for an algorithm to see. So suddenly it would know just from statistics that if little children in the residential neighborhoods are around balls, there is some probability that the ball will go uh, into the driving field and then what to do next, right? And, but basically what we have done with that in a virtual environment, we have taught a very expensive association uh, a very expensive versus real world, right? Uh, something that you potentially cannot even 
teach in the real world because of you know all the implications. You can be hitting children to have cars know that it's bad to hit children. And you have taught that piece of uh, human knowledge and transferred the knowledge to, to the algorithm. And uh, in the industrial automation, any kind of manual labor that is being done can similarly be substituted using virtual environment. And uh, how fast data set demand is growing? Well, it is growing exponentially. It's growing with the same with, with with an appetite for AI applications, right? You know, any 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 company that's trying to do AI right now would need a data set, and all of their future plans would need a data would, would need to include data sets. So as People are realizing that, that uh, a lot of tasks are now possible with uh, AI-assisted algorithms. They're going to go for that, uh, for, for the data, and they're going to go for these efforts. So imagine any part of the economy where you see AI uh, right now, manufacturing, data analysis, retail, there you need a data set. And that data set is evergreen, right? So for example, because, uh, circumstances change. And you always need to update the data set. Okay, why not proof of stake more sustainable and confirmed? Can you give us some pros and cons? Well, um, we are not a blockchain in a classical sense, right? We are not uh, 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 a currency that is supposed to be mined by solving useless problem by solving an algorithm, right? We're actually connected to a specific process. We are connected to useful work, so for, therefore proof of work is more natural to us, right? And it's not about being eco-friendly because we are just not we are, we are not just burning resources. Let's say like Bitcoin does. It's for them the the, the or you know for them the, that eco footprint is important because that just waste heat that they're generating <clears throat> trying to compute the hash. In our case, it's an actual uh, economic task which is useful and necessary. And therefore, in this case. Uh, Eco-friendliness is priced into the whole, into whole, into the whole business process, right? It is not wasteful. Do we cooperate with some Chinese enterprises? Just now, I heard of Alibaba. We are not to date, but we plan to take Chinese direction as very, very seriously. We have quite a lot of uh, Chinese investors, uh, contributors, uh, rather, into the project, and our plan is uh, to actively work in the Chinese market and pair up with. Uh, uh, companies that want to have AI AI capability. So we have a very robust a robust set of plans to to enter Chinese market and currently looking for partners. So if you 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 have people, please suggest. Yeah. So the miners are crucial. So the miners are the people who carry all the computations, right? So there are several types of computations. Uh, one computation is generating synthetic data, right? So uh, from a data generator. Uh, as a miner, you would be able to uh, grab the data generator as a task into your Docker container, and run it on your on your machine, and generate the the, the examples, right? And the, the examples of these data are the the, the, uh, the data pieces are either visual images, or let's say movie clips, or uh, text-based data, or sound-based data, whatnot, right? So we just need need capacity to generate it. And second is model training. So when this uh, uh, model, which is in essence is a huge matrix, is uploaded to your computer, it needs to readjust its weights. And this is done on the video cards. And so uh, we will use miners' video cards to, to, to train the model and arrive at uh, the set of weights and neural networks that would, would solve the problem. And the third element is once the model is trained uh, to deploy the model and carry the computation for some useful tasks. So for instance, Let's say that uh, I, uh, we have a client who has tons of video cameras needs to install people counting uh, models uh, for his uh, IP cameras. So that person would be able to go to Neuromation. Uh, and if there is a, a people counting model available from the market, uh, uh, that person would be able to select it, push a button, and deploy that system across the miners. So now whenever a person would cross a field of uh, uh, his camera, that picture would go to uh, 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 neural nets deployed on the minor machines, and this this would give the, the the people count. So this is called model tenancy. So again, miners are necessary for us for data generation, for model training, and for model tenancy, and this is crucial. Okay, so uh, answer it, answer it, answer it. What else? Let me actually. Uh, 
uh, take a break for 30 seconds. I need to plug in my my laptop one second. Back. So what's what's the next question? Yeah, is there a specific hardware that Neuromation recommends for miners? Yeah, we have Dennis uh, responding to this over the email. There is definite uh, hardware set that uh, if you if you write us to support, he'll be able to answer. Answer this, and and he I think will be doing AMA soon, so you can exactly ask him specifically for the uh, for the specific hardware set. Okay, any more? Okay. What are you currently working on? Uh -huh. Well, there are tons of stuff that I'm working on. I'm working with our CTO of Fyodor to make sure that uh, we deliver the platform, the first version of the platform that um, can deliver the business processes required. Uh, we are also working on opening up the development offices uh, and staffing people in Eastern Europe uh, for both uh, development and our labs division we plan to have a very strong uh, dev core uh, in eastern europe because of the cost considerations we don't want to be um, uh, careless with uh, the funds that we have uh, we already have increased our headcount to about 50 and these are mostly programmers and you would need to probably you know roughly double it uh, over the next three or four months to make sure that we meet our goals for 2018 we're also opening um, uh, science labs, and this is where deep learning and computer uh, computer learning specialists uh, would be sitting. And one plan, uh, one uh, a lab would be opened in St. Petersburg, and another one is in the process of being opened in Bay Area, California. So both of these are 
uh, being done. Uh, we're also doing a lot of corporate stuff uh, and you know just uh, helping Max operate the company now that uh, well, that craziness connected with the token sale is starting to die down. Uh, we're also working on setting up the first uh, reference clients and vendors into the platform and doing that first uh, crucial business development step so that um, uh, we have the ability to uh, move forward and uh, operate the business. Uh, we are also uh, working on finalizing our sales teams, which are going to be working out of Tel Aviv. And now I believe is going to be on the AMA, so he talk, can talk about sales and challenges that the sales team will have. And they already started, and already we see uh, you know, tons of leads that they're generating. So it's very bullish on, on their activity. What are the main challenges? Well, you know, it's, it's a huge challenge for running a, a big distributed organization, which is going to grow really fast and get even bigger. And uh, uh, of course, you know, their uh, people's visions of the organization need to be synchronized, but also the product needs to be delivered and uh, the, the selling needs to happen. The proper uh, biz dev and corporate partnership should be, should be established. And uh, it's day-to-day -day struggle like with any with any fast growing startup it's, it's really hard to say what what's our main challenge well the main challenge is to keep the, the group cohesively and actively working together so that we are striving toward you know common goal of making your mission as effective as possible what is the process for registration of miners who wish to offer so there's going to be forms available for people to register and dennis can speak to them we're going to be providing urls for the forms where people would be able to come in and, and sign up as vendors uh, to the, for the platform, and that includes miners. What's my responsibility in the team? So my responsibility is to help Max uh, run the company. Uh, also, I have uh, direct sales in the product under my uh, under my kind of you know uh, mandate as of now. So I'm working actively with uh, uh, Fyodor and Dennis uh, to make sure that we are properly staffed and that uh, the product vision is there and then we are delivering on the, on the scope, but also with Evan to make sure that his radio office is staffed and the sales goals are set and uh, the, the, the sales process is set up. Uh, what am I most proud of, Gio? Uh, in, in case of Neuromation, I'm proud that uh, with the uh, help of our contributors, we actually have uh, built something that can, you know, uh, um, be something, something big, you know, and, and make real difference in the world uh, going forward. Because we truly, if we do everything right, can democratize AI and become one of those uh, giant companies, not unlike Google and Alibaba, but uh, uh, hopefully with the software edge. Uh, what are the plans for expanding the team? So, as I said, we roughly plan to double our headcount in the next three to four months from about 40 people, uh, from about 50 people to 80, uh, 80 to 100. So I, even even as I speak, these headcounts fluctuate because uh, we are, we are, you know, uh, Dennis is hiring people. Uh, and uh, that should be enough basically to, uh, I think, complete our goals for 2018 and based on uh, the, the, the feedback that, that the, the, the market will give us, uh, we will probably think about uh, the, the further plans for expansion. It's very easy to overexpand if you have resources, and it's very easy to overexpand beyond your ability to control the, the process and the direction of the company. So we want to avoid this mistake. And the company of uh, 50 people is not the company of 10 people, and the company of uh, uh, 10 people is not a company of 100 people, right? There are scaling issues. So you're probably going to be under 100 for 2018 and then slowly see how we can expand from there depending on, on what's, what's going on in the market. How will your mission be supporting these applications being built under your mission platform? So applications under your mission platforms built in the labs would be available on the platform. So the labor of labs would be available uh, on your mission platform to purchase, whether it's be, be, be models, data sets, or generators. And uh, unless you know it's it's done for a custom client, where then your mission lab would just function as a customer of your mission platform. Uh, 
what makes NeuroMation platform unique would be easy for another project to copy it. I think I went about it at length already, attacking it from three different angles. And I'm just going to recap quickly, say that NeuroMation addresses three fundamental problems in AI right now. And these are data, computational capacity, and expertise. And none of the platforms that we see right now are addressing this triad, which actually to be effective has to be located under you, you, you can't just have you know a good model with lack of data because your model is only as good as its data. Vice versa, you know, if your model is not optimized, your result, your result is going to be subpar. And this is also all a moot point if you don't have good people to produce either. Or you don't have computational capacity to run effective experiments and move your stuff forward. So to truly democratize AI, you need all of those three under one roof. And currently only neuromation has it as a vision. And competitors might be doing things, but in their ideation, there is some months behind. So uh, I think we're going to do really well. What's the difference in uh, uh, versions alpha, beta? Yeah, I already answered that question. Uh, I can I can go over it again. Let me just ask the moderator. Uh, Yes, I think I answered it. I can quickly recap what's the difference between alpha, beta, and production. So alpha releases, you know, kind of alpha, beta release what we're doing now. It would just give the basic feel for what uh, functionality to expect is going to be centralized. And it will give uh, ability to transact in TK and uh, 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 see what kind of business flows are available. So beta is going to be like alpha, beta, but fully automated, still centralized, and it's going to take a, a, a is going to use for computational capacity our friendly minor pools. Still, you know, these friendly minor pools are in multiple thousands of GPUs. So uh, GPUs will be supporting quite a bit of computational capacity. But it will be automated. And then the product production version will be fully decentralized and it will be on a blockchain auction, right? Where any node will not only be able to perform services, but also request services. So you don't, you won't have to go through uh, neuromation.io to uh, neuromation blockchain and take advantage of uh, the AI capability uh, for NTK. Okay, so I think we've got most of these out of the way. Yeah, so about myself, well, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've been doing uh, technical projects for probably around 20 years already. Studied applied math in UC Berkeley and uh, uh, went into business, built companies, sold a few. Had a few good experiences, a few bad experiences, but generally, uh, my strong point was building a product, focusing on the product, and what I'm helping uh, Neuromation with. We are going to create a long for application or do a product for a marketplace. Where, yeah, so very good question. So uh, synthetic data is going to be generated. We are the generators, and actually people have to write generators, and these are software development teams. And yes, uh, we are going to provide the marketplace where you would be able to go and hire a software development team for NTK that would write you a generator. And then the generator, if you feel generous and you want to make money with it, you can expose on the marketplace mm -hmm. and people can generate data with it and you can earn NTK. Similarly, if you are a software development team which is capable of writing a generator and there's lots of requests for a specific generator, you can go create the generator and uh, uh, sell it in the marketplace and make and, 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 and make uh, uh, NTK balance. 
And uh, our plan is to aggressively recruit these teams and also create demand from the industry so that our generator library and data library grows very fast. So ideally, our vision is that in a year or two, you'd be able to uh, go into your information platform and in the marketplace, see tens of thousands of examples of generators and data, data sets, just for every conceivable uh, vertical. So yeah, we plan to provide an open marketplace where every, uh, everybody can sell. And that goes not only toward data set, but obviously for the, for the miners as well, right? So the miners will be able to sell their capacity and uh, uh, the uh, 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 people who are creating data sets are going to generate, uh, going to sell their uh, data, data services. And what we will provide, we will provide the expertise and the framework, you know, uh, it's done properly. So these data sets truly do perform when you uh, use machine learning on them. Yeah, so Max and I were um, about Neuromation project working, uh, trying to create a company that would uh, uh, unblock AI. And the idea was we're going to unblock it through synthetic data. And we actually started doing some experiments last summer, no, uh, last spring. And the experiments went really well. We were able to uh, train models on uh, synthetic data. And then the models would perform really well in the real world use cases without ever seeing the real world. So that's how uh, we tested out the first premise. And then some friends of ours who were doing mining at that time suggested that we use some of their capacity because we were pay overpaying for Amazon. And uh, one thing led to another. We tried to run our experiments on their machines, and it worked smoothly. So then they were also. Um, uh, 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 at the time, uh, at the time, told us about uh, token sales and what it was, and about Ethereum and uh, ICOs and all that, uh, and all the jazz. And then we thought, well, you know, if we combine that with with uh, global public markets of uh, token sales and create a global transactable currency, maybe we can take this thing really big. And from that, the idea of, the, uh, of, of neuromations, the token sale, and the platform evolved. Uh, gradually, and then uh, uh, we prepared for a few months, and then we started our token sale in September. And at that uh, at that time, we also hired our first uh, serious devs to start working on the platform, and uh, we've been working on it ever since with various degrees of intensity. Obviously, as our token sale, uh, more and more people liked our idea, the intensity increased. Okay, what current partnerships can you discuss? Close. Uh, yeah, we are going to actually some of some of those are already public, and uh, uh, I don't think we have any secret partnerships that are happening. Although there are a few that we can talk about, and we will we will manifest them. The but uh, uh, nothing nothing that's 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 hidden as far as you can see. So I Yes, so Neuromation is providing the framework and the marketplace for vendors to come in and to create this data for various verticals, right? So some of these data sets we will create ourselves through the labs. But mostly it will be done with uh, the help of our vendors. We're going to come into marketplace and do that, this data set creation. And then we're going to use minor capacity, miners' capacity to actually uh, generate the data sets, to actually run the program that's going to generate all this multitude of examples. So. Uh, in a nutshell, Neuromation is uh, uh, a provider of platform for this to be done correctly. It's uh, an arbiter, and it's provider of computation capacity to create synthetic yeah. data at scale. 
is this an endless amount of work? It is an endless amount of work, but if you go to Alibaba right now, you will see endless amounts of uh, real world goods being sold there. You go to uh, you go to supermarkets, you will see an endless amounts of uh, shelves, endless shelves with endless amounts of stuff on them. So that's what the platforms are for, to create the endless amounts of things for uh, the real world, for the industry. Can, can it be created automatically? So uh, uh, it can be created based on the generator and the domain. So if you created the generator in certain domains, for example, you created a, a, a city in simulation for a self-driving car, right? You can set up the parameters and procedurally generate all kinds of scenarios there. So uh, uh, does it mean that you can use that particular generator for other tasks? No, you can. But within that domain, you can produce multiplicity of examples. Yeah, guys, so uh, I see no more questions. Well, thank you, everybody. Then, you know, we'll take a short 10 minute break until our next. Uh, uh, next AMA session. So uh, thank you all for attending and listening. And of course, if you have more questions, always send them to support. We'd be able to, we'd be happy to answer them in, in the in the email form. And then uh, that's about it for me. So uh, in ten minutes, we are going to have Dennis, uh, who is going to do uh, AMA, and he'll definitely be able to give you more in depth technical. Uh, uh, talk about the support CPUs, our containers, and uh, some of our uh, other technology plans, because he's way more technical than I am. Okay, thank you, guys.